In this presumably last video on the series, we'll be testing three GPUs of similar performance in four single player titles. The goal for this test is to both find a quality preset where the game experience is good and to get an idea of what GPU performs better. Before we go through the games and the benchmark results, here's a quick reminder on the hardware used. The R9290X, the oldest, hottest and loudest of the cards. The RX 570, using a newer iteration of the GCN architecture, running at half the TDP but also on a lithography process half the size than the one used on the R9290X. And the GTX 970, having a similar performance and TDP as the RX 570, despite being built on the same node used by the R9290X. The other half of the hardware equation consists in the Z230 workstation, with the same i7-4770 equivalent Xeon, and the same 32GB DDR3 memory at 1600MHz in dual channel. Last reminder before we go into gaming results. The aim is to find the preset where the average FPS goes above 45 FPS and the 1% low stays above 30, ideally at 1080 resolution. We start off with GTA 5. The game has an incredible flexibility, allowing potato GPUs to run it at the lowest possible settings, yet still providing enough of a challenge at higher settings for more powerful cards. At 1080 resolution and all settings set to high, but without any advanced graphic options turned on, the R9290X averaged 90 FPS with the 1% lows at 57. While not 60 plus FPS all of the time, it is still a good gaming experience. The RX 5070 performs more or less the same, 3 FPS more on the average, 2 less for the 1% lows, chip off the old block I'd say. As for the GTX 970, it took the lead with 98 FPS for the average and 58 for the 1% lows. All three cars run the game quite fine. For the next game we'll switch the urban jungle of Los Santos for the real deal, somewhere in South America. The r 9 x is not quite having it at highest settings. While the average FPS for the standard benchmark is adequate at 50, the 1% lows fails to go above 30. You won't get the game over screen on account of those but the experience is noticeably worse than what the other cards provide. Both the RX 570 and the GTX 970 average around 50 FPS, with the Nvidia card providing 6 more FPS. Not much to affect gameplay by a lot, but enough to point out who leads the pack. The 1% loss of 32 is something that the old 290X can only dream of, as we'll see when dropping the quality presets down a notch. At the same 1080 resolution but high quality preset, the R9290X still fails to clear the 30 FPS threshold for the 1% lows. The average went up by 5 FPS, but that's just about it. The RX 570 now averages 60 FPS with 1% lows in the low 40s, while the GTX 970 averages 61 FPS with the 1% lows in the mid 30s. A small W for the Polaris card if you ask me. Unfortunately, 1080 medium is still not low enough for the R9290X. Its 1% low stay firmly stuck in the mid 20s, while the average improved by just 1 FPS. This could be due to it enjoying legacy driver support only. I'll link a video in the description if you really want to learn what that entails. No point in dwelling here too much. Okay, imagine playing prop hunt, but with one twist, where failure to find the prop can get you killed. That will give you a good idea on how Prey feels like. Since it's an older title though, one can bump up the visuals to the highest and, at least with these cards, still get a more than adequate performance. At 1080 resolution and high settings, both the R9290X and the RX 570 perform almost identically. Same average, just above 110 FPS, and same 1% lows in the high 60s. The game plays great. However, the GTX 970, while providing the same average, has a much better 1% lows in the mid-80s. And while the extra 25 FPS will not impact your performance in the game, the enjoyment factor is definitely improved by it. The fourth game to test is Borderlands 3. It shows up on sales quite frequently, the game is fun and it also has a co-op mode. VRAM usage is more critical here and this will be easier to spot in the 1% lows. Starting off with 1080 resolution and ultra settings, the R9290X average in the high 30s, with 1% lows at 6. Yep, that bad. The RX 570 averaged 35 FPS, 2 less than the 290X, but it had its 1% lows in the high 20s. Close, but no cigar. 
The GTX 970 decided to keep the R990X company, scoring a similar average and a similarly bad 1% loss. Clearly, Ultra is not where it's at. High settings at the same resolution has the old R9290X finally averaging above 45 FPS. The 1% loss are also in the double digits, but still coming up short of 8 FPS from the threshold mentioned at the beginning of the video. The RX 570 improves by quite a bit with the 1% loss now in the mid 30s, and while the 43 FPS quality average is too less than the required 45, I'll give the Polaris card a small W. The GTX 970 has the average FPS right on the money at 45. The 1% loss however are in the teens, worse than what the 290X managed. So high has just the RX 570 performing barely adequate. Maybe high is still too high. Medium settings is a considerable jump in performance for the 290X with its 1% loss now in the low 40s and the average in the mid 60s. The results for the RX 570 are almost identical to the ones obtained by the 290X. As for the GTX 970, while the average is the same as the previous two cards, the 1% loss is 5 FPS less. While still above the 30 FPS threshold, it does make it the slowest of the cards, at least for this game. Looking back one more time at the three GPUs we tested, summing up the average FPS for each card would make you believe that the GTX 970 is the best of the bunch. However, if we factor in the 1% loss metrics, things get more complicated. The RX 570 will provide the smoothest experience, at least for the games tested in this video. But then again, we reached the same conclusion in the previous video as well, so... You know what they say, if there's smoke... That doesn't mean, however, that the GTX 970 is a bad card. It still provides the higher averages, and Borderlands 3, the game that single-handedly tanked the 1% totals for this card, is just one game. As for the R990X, I keep wondering how much of that lack of performance, again we're talking about the 1% lows, how much of that can be attributed to older drivers. Anyway, this cast will probably make a few more appearances. There may be a few other games worth testing with these cards, so make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out. As for this one, we're done. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked it, and I'll